You know, the gentleman this, on, on this seat has been a flag bearer of India at many an international conference and exhibition I've been to. Uh, Mr. Ramki, uh, the head of Prime Focus Technologies. You know, I'll, you know, just begin by talking about what are you doing currently in this ecosystem? We started about 10 years ago. Um, you know, content is digital, but we realized that enterprises are not, or the companies, the players in the M&E space are not digital. What I mean by that is, uh, is really that, you know, while, while it's digital content, we're delivering to consumers on digital platforms, but the way they are organized, the way they, uh, they deal with content, the way they manage content, the activities around content, the way they manage their suppliers, they may, the, the way they sort of interact with their customers, uh, I think all of that is not necessarily as digital as uh, the digital content is. And that's where we thought there is, a, there is an opportunity to play. We, we think we are the SAP or Oracle in this business. Uh, so everything we want to deal with content is really what we, we created a software platform called Clear. Uh, and, and our customers use that platform to manage their, what we call business of content. So we are a B2B software. Uh, we obviously natively cloud. Uh, right from the day we created the company, it is a software as sold as a subscription. And uh, customers really use our technology platform to, um, uh, one, in, in, in some sense, I would say that bring agility to their business, which is extremely important. Uh, one, drive efficiencies. And, uh, you know, we have this interesting concept of um, uh, what we call T-Corp. It's really the total cost of operations. So customers really use our technology platform to really, you know, uh, while they gain agility and, and try to maximize revenue from their uh, from their content, uh, how do you sort of do that at the lowest cost of operations? And I think that's really what our obsession has been over the last 10 years. And, uh, you know, our platform manages uh, over a million and a half hours of content today for our customers. And, uh, you know, all those customers that we work with, uh, you know, that's exactly what we do. We, you know, we bring in um, some method to the madness in the way they deal with their content and activities around content. What kind, of, uh, what kind of services are you providing specifically? Is it the uh, advertising? Is it the, uh, uh, you know, uh, a kind of a online aggregation of the content? Or is it content delivery to other markets where they are actually showing the channels? What, what kind of, how many services are you providing to these? I think we work with a broad cross-section of customers. Uh, broadcast networks obviously are, is our single largest sort of customer segment. Um, studios or content owners um, are the second biggest sort of uh, uh, group of customers. We also work with service providers, um, you, know, the, you know, OTT providers, um, you know, the likes of Netflix, Amazon Prime, those kinds of sort of, you know, if you will, um, service providers or Tata Sky, uh, those kinds of service providers. And we also work with brands. So we, we do work with, um, you know, the cross-section of them. What we do to them, obviously, you know, there is a technology offering, which is really what we lead with, which is a, a B2B software that they use to, you know, deal with all activities around content, starting with content management to doing every activity associated with the content that they need to, right? Uh, and, and pretty much every, you know, everybody in the company who, because their lives revolve around content, so it could be the creative creative department, it could be the marketing department, it could be the operations department, it could be the legal department, uh, sales department, uh, you know, pretty much everybody, senior management, everybody's sort of activities revolve around content. They all have, use our app or our portal uh, to, to manage the activities. And uh, so that's the technology offering. And uh, the technology obviously also orchestrates all the activities, the workflow, the enterprise workflow associated with, uh, you know, prepping, processing, and delivering content. So that's the technology piece. And on the back of that, we have a whole host of media services, So, which is, which is content preparation, compliance-related work, um, adding metadata to content, um, you know, localization, um, creative services on the back of that. So yeah, it's a, it's a combination of sort of um, technology and services that's sort of really what brings uh, the collective value that we deliver to our customers. Does a company have to have scale and a specific amount of content to come and, you know, use your services or anybody, any small content company could also? Actually, you know, um, we've increasingly, as we've grown, we've made, we've become more palatable for customers who even um, are, are smaller relative to our traditional sort of engagement with bigger customers. Uh, today, we have a lot more number of smaller customers that sort of engage with us. 
Um, and, 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 you know, we have customers now who, you know, who, who produce maybe, you know, 10, 20 hours of content every month. And they, they, they find what we do very relevant. Uh, because, you know, like I said, ultimately, uh, there's a lot of sort of, you know, effort around the core business that need to kind of, you know, for you to be successful. And I think a lot of people are dialing into companies like ourselves. Great. Now, you know, I'll go on to the industry. So what are the challenges that the media and entertainment enterprise face while delivering content to OTT platforms? I think a lot was spoken today in, in, in today's panel. Um, I think first and foremost, um, you know, I would say scale. Uh, because if you look at uh, most OTT platforms, uh, given, the, given the customer acquisition cost, the distribution cost, and so on and so forth, you want to be more... Um, you got to deliver more to that consumer. So you, you, you really are kind of expecting to deliver, to actually aggregate more and more content on the back of which there is scale. If you're a platform, there is scale. If you're a supplier of content, and, and you know, there, is, there is scale there as well, because nobody is asking for a 13-part episode or a 26-part episode anymore as a, as, a, as a purchase order. They want a few hundred or a few thousand hours of content. So whether you are on the content creation, aggregation, or on the platform side, you're dealing with scale. And when you deal with scale, I think, um, you know, there are, you know, today, if you look at it, platforms that were delivering, I mean, content that was really going on a platform, a language, there's increasingly sort of merit in it being localized. Uh, so there is, there is increased demand for all the downstream activities around that content. Third is, I think, quality. I think, you know, if you really look at it, uh, in all of the scale, I think, uh, equally, quality is sort of assumed. I mean, I'm, I'm not, not talking about content quality, the creative quality. I mean, I mean, obviously that there's more and more spoken about it, that the content need to be relevant and engaging and compelling for somebody to kind of do. There's also sort of quality in terms of experience. I'm saying over and above that, the, the accuracy of the content, the metadata, you know, you, you being able to find consistently, consistently the content quality uh, in terms of what the, because that drives sort of experience, that drives engagement, that drives satisfaction. Uh, so I think, that and, and last but not the least, cost. You know, because if you really look at it, business models have changed from, from getting sort of, you know, a one-time upfront check for the content that you supply. Now, many of them are going into sort of different models to kind of make sure there is more availability. Consequently, uh, you know, I think, I think if you put all of them together, trying to get a solve for this is really, I think, where the challenge really lies. I, I'm, I mean, there are other challenges being spoken about. I'm not repeating any of them. So what's your solution to these challenges? I think it's, uh, you know, I call this content supply chain automation. Right. Um, and I think, I think that's sort of really, I think, what is, uh, what is quintessentially, in, in some sense, lacking. Uh, you know, customers, and then again, this is not a problem. In India, the problem is a little more acute, because if you really look at it, uh, we just produce more, more hours of content uh, than, than anybody else in the world. So there's far more volume there, and the, con the problem is, 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 is more acute here. But equally across the world, uh, this problem of, content supply chain automation and or lack of it. You know, today, if you look at it, that starts with content management. You know, I, I've heard from enough and more customers that, you know, they didn't have an m and &E track for a piece of content and they ended up recreating it. They actually spend more money recreating the m and &E track than the money that they made in distribution, right? So right from sort of managing content and organizing and keeping the right content at the place so that when a distribution order comes in, you're able to fulfill that, all the way to, you know, your you know, you're distributing to many, many markets. There are many compliance and local rules and regulations that you are going to comply with. There is localization, like I said. You know, the, one of the biggest growing sort of spaces is localization and good quality localization. And with all of that, you know, and, and each one of this is a transaction. And, and, and those transactions need to be managed depending on who you are. And I think, you know, this is where work order administration really comes in. You know, like, like any other... You know, if you go to a retail or manufacturing or healthcare, everything, you know, these are elements that they have tackled, which I think media and entertainment have not paid enough attention to, which we think is the opportunity for what we are focused on, where it's really providing content supply chain automation. That, and then that actually reduces the total cost of operations. And I think that's really the So uh, how the does challenge. your BFT Clear help in achieving faster time to market and uh, with the lowest total cost of operations? So I think one, you know, one, you're starting with organizing it properly. Uh, so, you know, every time you're not scrambling for uh, the, the elements of content that's required. 
I mean, take for instance today, you know, in the earlier panel, you talked about the same piece of content being delivered to di different platforms. Each platform has different sets of requirements, okay? Each one requires different artifacts associated with the main content, right? If you don't organize that, if you don't have m a proper methodology on how you will kind of create these downstream, one, you'll take more time, and second, you will spend more money in fulfilling for that, right? So number, that's number one. Second really is if you, if you look at it, there are enough and more standards that sort of come into, come into play. You know, you're, you're distributing linear and you're distributing on demand. You're creating a subtitle for this. You're going and manually retiming the subtitle because in the digital you're stitching the, you're removing and stitching the different segments. Imagine the amount of manual things that you sure. sort of tend to do. Take for instance, you're doing compliance. You do compliance for India. You do compliance for Ofcom because most of this content you deliver to European countries. Then you want to distribute to an airline, right? And each one of these times you are now have an editor going and figuring out, oh, which piece of content is relevant for which platform. So if you will, what we are trying to kind of do is organize content very well and try and remove as much of bringing automation to remove the human either orchestration or human effort you know, as much as possible. And of course, we have specific tools, right? You know, through machine learning and others, we have specific tools that obviously sort of anticipate some of this and so on. A culmination of all of this and the experience of having, you know, delivering to a broad cross-section of platforms. Sure. And, and then again, that sort of really brings in the richness. Imagine today, <clears throat> you know, when somebody buys our platform, they already have presets to deliver to Prime, to Hotstar, to Woot, to YouTube, to Facebook, to, to uh, about 500 destinations across the world. And that list is growing, right? I mean, the, the, the specs of how I deliver to Cox, how I deliver to Comcast, how I deliver to Charter, right? Starting from there, or how I deliver to aggregators. Or how, how I, I deliver to 4K, if I have to. And, and so all of this is basically where I think it's in some sense a problem underestimated by larger audiences around the world, and I, and I think that's, that's just fine because that's just the evolution. And that's really where we've gone a couple of steps further to solve those problems once, and there is an ability to reuse many, many times when you work with the cross-section of customers. And, and you know, initially the, the setup time is there, and your, your involvement is there, and post that you leave it to the customer to manage, or it's automated again? How, how much of resources does the, does the customer have to so put have in two, place? So we have two models. One is a model where we call it a white glove model, where we deal with all the complexity, use, and, and use our own platform, but deal with the complexity. And the second one is a self-service. So many of them, we just sell the, sell the technology and the customer uses the platform and, and does use the platform like we would uh, when we're delivering a white glove service. Fantastic. So uh, uh, guys with content, uh, companies with content, OTT platforms, here's uh, Prime Focus Technologies who's willing to help you, get, you know, monetize your content better, manage your content better, reach out to the team. And thank you very much, uh, Ramki, for being here and partnering us on this. Thank you very Thank much. You.